What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, except for Smoke Wagon Bourbon from Nevada H&C Distilling Company, which has been gaining quick popularity as of late. Let's try our luck with Smoke Wagon Bourbon today on The Mash and Drum. Jonathan Hensley and Aaron Chepanek are the co-founders of the popular Fremont East watering hole, The Griffin, in downtown Las Vegas. One day, a conversation and what they both liked in vodkas and bourbons turned into the idea of opening Las Vegas' first distillery. While drinking a bottle of Russian Diamond Vodka, the official vodka of the Kremlin that is silver filtered, they both had the idea to make something like that on their own in the US using silver filtration. And just like that, they got a space in Las Vegas and started producing their silver dollar vodka made from 100% corn and copper pot distilled using the same silver filtration as in their favorite vodka. The front of the really cool bottle contains a replica of Morgan silver dollar, which was the currency used in the Old West. The Old West is the theme used throughout the offerings and bottles from the h &C Nevada Distilling Company. But from there, Jonathan and Aaron shifted to bourbon and the next stage began, creating an affordable and high quality bourbon that everyone can enjoy. Seeing how they had no experience in making bourbon, they turned to the godfather of modern craft distilleries, the late great Dave Pickerel, for some help. Now with a love for high rye bourbons, they turned to MGP. Now back then in 2012, MGP had a lot of barrels on hand and a lot of barrels aging as well, so they purchased as much 36% high rye bourbon that they could. And then they formed a partnership from that to keep creating that same mash bill and a lot more barrels through contract distilling. After that, Smoke Wagon Small Batch Bourbon was born. The name Smoke Wagon was chosen to stay with that Old West theme that I talked about earlier. The front of the bottle has two iconic single action Colt revolvers that in Old West slang were called Smoke Wagons and the guns that won the West. Now there's a motto below the guns that says Bibimus Moriendum Est, which literally translated is let us drink for we must die, or more loosely, drink and have fun because we won't be around forever. Amber bottles were also chosen as a throwback to the way bottles were made in the Old West because in those times they thought that amber bottles actually preserved the whiskey longer. And now on to the reviews. Released in 2016, Smoke Wagon Small Batch is a high rye content bourbon that blends bourbons of four to eight years old. Now since younger high rye bourbons can have prominent spice, blending it with the older versions of that bourbon where the spice can be aged out a bit, combines the bold spiciness of the younger vintage and the smooth mouthfeel and sweet aromas from the older vintages. This is bottled at 100 proof and available in select areas for about 50 bucks. All right, so we're gonna start with the small batch bourbon from Smoke Wagon. Love the bottle design, as you guys saw in the close-ups. This is my favorite part. That wax, uh, almost a wax coin right in the front with the two Colt revolvers crossed over the state of Nevada with that motto underneath. Just a really cool design, really sticks out. All right, let's go into the nose, see what we get. So the first thing I'm getting here is that high rye flavor profile. I'm getting a lot of citrus and a lot of vanilla cream, almost creamsicle-esque a little bit. Definitely some rich vanillas, rich caramels. These are not light flavors. This is coming through as very rich and a little bit darker. Getting a little bit of a ginger spice in there too. Man, vanilla cream. Still getting a lot of that citrus. Almost a gingerbread cookie molasses type flavor profile going on too. Getting a little bit of maple syrup as well. It's a very well-rounded nose. You could see where the younger whiskey and the older whiskey are mingling together to create something a little bit more uh, spicy on the younger end and then something a little bit more rounded with the older bourbon mixed in. So let's go for a sip, see what we get. Mm, yeah, this has that really good MGP flavor profile. Love the spice up front. You get that prickliness that I always talk about right up front on the palate. A lot of vanilla cream, then all of a sudden that citrus, that spice really takes over the sides of your tongue. It kind of holds there for a little while and then all of a sudden now I'm getting a nice oaky, spicy finish. Definitely takes you through a little bit of a ride here. Let's go for another sip. Yeah, the more you sip this, the more citrus you get. There's a cinnamon red hot thing going on too. You really get that beautiful high rye note to it, but it's really balanced out by some really nice molasses notes. I'm getting a, a hint of kind of a, like a Granny Smith apple on the palate too to go around with that citrus. Really a really good blend. Let's try it again. Man, I'm loving this. 
I love this. I love the way that this is blended together. Look, you could blend a lot of different whiskeys together, young and old, but there's definitely an artistry in how you do it. And you don't want one to overpower the other. You don't want to lose the traits of the younger whiskey to balance out the older one. This is a really great uh, small batch. You're giving that really nice spice up front, the citrus notes, a little bit of molasses as it works its way back. The citrus notes start taking over a little bit more, get a little hint of apple. Then as the finish comes, that's where you get that, that typical MGP high rise spice, that, that bourbon notes, almost piney and, and, but yet sweet at the same time. Still definitely citrusy on the back end. Lingers, it, it drinks really easy for a hundred proofer. It's really nice to sip on. Go for one last sip on this one. Yeah, that finish is when all the baking spices, allspice, cinnamon still are kind of balancing out that, that, uh, that high rye, that high spice flavor profile as well. It's, it's like it takes you through, you, you could taste each of the blends that are in this bottle. You could taste the, the low end, which is the, the younger whiskey, and you could definitely taste the, um, the higher age stuff as well. Really makes for a great combination of flavors. All right, so next up is one that I'm excited about. This is the Uncut Unfiltered, which has the same mindset as the small batch, but at a higher proof. And that mindset is creating a bourbon that's smooth and enjoyable with higher proof while maintaining some spice from the younger vintage and using some of the older vintage traits as well. Now, these barrels are specially selected and batched uniquely with barrels that range from about four to 12 years old. Um, since they're batched together, each batch can have a slightly different flavor profile. And this is also available in select markets with a price tag of about 70 bucks. All right, so let's get into the Uncut Unfiltered. Wow, totally super cherry note on the nose here. A lot of cherry and a lot of apple. And getting like apple pie crust on here. Very sweet, very sugary. Now the one thing you are still getting is there's some of that citrus note there from the that I was getting in the small batch as well, uh, from that high rye mash bill. Man, you are getting a little bit of that evergreen pine needle type quality to it as well but there's so much sweet going on on top of it. It really isn't too much of a powerful note. Man, molasses. Yeah, but the apple, cherry, citrus, pie combination is just really overtaking the nose here. Really delicious. You have your deep dark uh, baking spices here that I'm getting too. The cinnamon, the nutmeg, definitely some vanillas and caramels here as well. This one also has a little hint of chocolate. All right, I can't wait to taste this one. Here we go, cheers. Ooh, that one came in spicy. Oh yeah, there's a lot of spice in that one. Oh, but there's all the sweet. This has a lot of spice, but that cherry note I was on the nose, it's almost like it's smoked. You're getting a little bit of that barrel char on there too. It's like a smoked cherry type note. Man, that one is way bolder in flavor than the small batch, but I could see where the uh, the similarities here, as you're talking about giving a profile that's also spicy, but also gives the rounded flavor to something a little bit higher age. Let's go for another sip. As I keep sipping this, more of the apple cinnamon notes started to come out. This is very apple forward. Still getting the cherry though too. A lot of citrus, molasses on the back end. Yeah, still getting a hint of that smoke too on the very back end as well. That's really delicious. Going for one last sip here on this one. Yeah, even, even this one, as spicy as it is, you're getting the flavor in spice. You're not getting it in proof. Now, this bottle came in at 57.5% ABV. So it's not incredibly high. That's uh, obviously higher than the 100 proof one we have here. But yeah, what you're getting in the flavor, you're not getting in alcohol or ethanol. It's coming through as in spice and flavor. Just a really delicious bourbon on that one. Let's go for one last sip just because I really liking this stuff. Yeah, it's so much apple now. So again, similar to this experience, but definitely richer, darker. Front of the palate, you get that prickly spiciness, a little bit of that, that, um, that high rye, that pine needle type aspect to it. But then as it starts working its way back, cherry, citrus, and now just a huge burst of apple cinnamon that just overtook the palate here. Works its way back. Right on the finish now, you're getting more of that sweet, spicy, all the baking spices come in, a little bit of cinnamon red hot. Kind of a medium finish. Like I said, it's not overly long. It drinks really nice uh, for this high of proof. Just um, 
I could see why that they're getting so popular so fast. All right, let's go for the final breakdown on the smoke wagons. Now prices for these are $50 for the small batch and 70 bucks for the uncut unfiltered respectively. Now availability for these is fair, but it's improving. Now while they may not be in a lot of liquor stores all over the country, they do have a great availability online with various uh, online liquor retailers. So definitely check out online if you can't find this in your local store. All right, next up is value. For value on these, I think value is high. When you're taking low-end and high-age MGP high-rise bourbon and blending it together to make something this high quality at an affordable price when compared to the rest of the market, I think you really have something. When you look at brands like Mic Drop and other brands that are either the same price but younger or high-age and way more expensive, this is actually a really great value. As far as recommend, if you haven't guessed, yes, absolutely. If you love high rye bourbons from MGP that showcase a mix of youthful spiciness and older and rounded out flavors, you will absolutely love this stuff, especially at the price. Now, when you add in the fun social media presence of h &C Nevada Distilling on Facebook and Instagram, and you can actually watch Aaron Chepanick blend barrels and talk about the process along with the quality to price ratio, you can see why Smoke Wagon Bourbon has gained popularity so quickly. It's definitely a recommend. One thing I do want to mention as well is the transparency. They are very transparent about them getting their whiskey from MGP, the blending that they do. Um, you could find it online with the information that they give and also what they're doing on social media as I mentioned as well. Transparency is something that's very welcome in the whiskey community, especially for whiskey nerds like us. We like to know where the whiskey's coming from, what's being blended, what's actually in the bottle, and you know, any distiller that does that, it's definitely a, uh, a welcome addition to the shelves. All right, everyone, well, thank you for watching this review of Smoke Wagon Bourbon, the small batch and the uncut unfiltered from h &C Nevada Distilling. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram and find me on Twitter. Let me know if you've had these, what you think of them. And as I always say, it is not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time on The Mash and Drum. Take care.